Dear friends of the Tom Photo Channel, many years ago I stopped loving only summer. I realized that if you're always waiting for summer, you are seriously missing out. What made me love all seasons was nature photography, and of course the love for skiing. But that's a separate story. I've gotten to the point where I can say that I like the current time and location the most because this is what is inspiring me at the current moment. Look at the landscapes in different seasons, and they are different landscapes. With four seasons, you get four different landscapes out of a single location, plus the weather. Of course, I'm not even talking about the fact that the light can change every 10 seconds and reveal a new sub landscape that is so different from the previous one that waiting for it was definitely worth it. Change your angle or focal length or anything, and you get yet another landscape. Photographers know all that. I'm lucky to live in a beautiful location and have four seasons of similar length. I can get the most out of what is around me. Let's start with January because a new shooting season starts at the sunrise of January 1st. Everyone else is still sleeping at home, recovering from New Year's Eve. But why not go out to look for those January clouds and frozen paths? Everything looks new and partially hidden by snow or frost. The mornings are perfect for photography. The afternoons work really well for skiing because why not? January has clean snow. It hasn't been around for too long, and there are no frequent melting cycles like you have in December. It really is the best time of the year to capture those all-white landscapes. Snow is relatively new in January, so I still have the energy to photograph it. When February comes, you think I'm tired of snow. No, the snow becomes different. If you hit one of those ultra cold mornings with a rising sun, where everything seems to stay afloat in the air and never settle down, you can quite literally photograph the air. Sunshine will be your flashlight, and distant pine trees can be your background. You have to run back to the warm car to bring your fingers back to life. However, the camera should not come in with you because it will fog up. Leaving it outside will kill the battery, though. So unfortunately, you are always in a hurry. All alone in a hurry because not another soul can be seen on those mornings in the woods. It's their loss, but they don't even know about it. February is really a good time for skiing as well, and the time when marathons take place. March should technically be a spring month, but in fact, it's a warm and wet version of winter. Your hope for sharp February-style sunshine is slim. Better focus on other subjects than wide-angle landscapes. Better to look closer. Look at something many people consider nothing special or even ugly, such as melting snow and mud. The melting snow comes with lots of water everywhere, and that's quite spectacular. In March, I need to use a bit of imagination to photograph. The end of March comes with the first signs of life, and that's always exciting. April is already early spring. The snow is gone, but green color only exists as isolated patches here and there. Those small dots of fresh life offer amazing opportunities against the otherwise gray and brown background. The contrast between life and no life is what is interesting. Early April mornings can still offer frozen views, and these are fun. These moments are generally brief and often end with a sunrise. The hepatica flower photography season is in April. Maybe I photograph the hepatica flowers so incredibly much because they are my favorite flowers. I have entire hepatica flower photography days when I photograph only them against the gray background. I like these flowers as landscape decoration, but also as close-ups. Alongside, you'll find snowdrops. These are shortly followed by the marching bells. These flowers together are very special because they are so prominent, and at the same time, the overall scene is quite colorless. April is pretty special because temperature-wise, it can be like winter or it can be like summer. It's a lot of fun to observe the first tiny green dots on the trees. Those into bird photography are very active in April because bird migration is at full throttle. May is the least difficult to explain. For most people, it is the prettiest month of the year, hands down. The freshness, intensity of color, sunshine, springing life coming from all directions. It's just beautiful all around you. Nobody around here will disagree. The key word is freshness and optimism. The northerners often envy people from warmer climates because they have more color and natural beauty. 
Not in May. Everyone around the world should envy us big time in May. This really is the place to be in May as a nature lover and beauty seeker. Turn your camera left or right, and you've got something to photograph. It's a good season to catch animals and birds. I try not to waste any good photography time in May. With the insects coming out and blossoms popping up everywhere, this is a good season for macro photography. Time for my 90mm Tamron macro lens and Nikon cameras. Most other photos I take with my Fujifilm cameras. June is very special because the sun doesn't really want to set very much. The days seem endless. With only a brief period of darkness in the middle of the night, you can easily start your sunny photography at 3 a.m. and continue until midnight again. I'm not happy that the sunrise is in the middle of the night because it's almost impossible to catch. One has to sleep sometimes too. In June, you focus on the freshness of summer. The lush colors of May are not over yet and everything green is fully grown and at its peak. The rapeseed fields are among my favorites in early June. They extend to the horizon and the color is unbelievable. This is a great time for bright summer landscapes. The macro photography season is continuing as well. July is midsummer. The summer is getting older in July. The greens are normal greens, no longer bright. So July might be the best chance to photograph what people do in the summer. Street photography, cafes, old towns, architecture. This is when towns come to life, when tourists come in and concerts happen, etc. Maybe also photograph flowers and fields. This is a really good time for macro photography again because the insects are very active and plentiful. The green color is getting a bit tired, so it's a good time to do some artsy photos. Now I have some time to experiment. July clouds are amazing too. Actually I'd say July is the best time for cloud photography over here. I like to do cloud time-lapse videos in July. See my time-lapse video tutorial linked down below. August is becoming more interesting because the fields change their color. The days have become a bit shorter again, so now you have a good chance to catch a summer sunrise. It always happened too early in June and July. The summer is becoming tired in August and it starts to mix with fall. I'd say you're more likely to find something interesting than you did in July. This interesting can be anything you see when walking or hiking in the woods. The berries and fruits have ripened and these offer good photo opportunities. People's yards too have become more interesting and you'll find all kinds of interesting flower combinations. The August clouds are not behind the July clouds and you might find them even more colorful. August is wonderful. September becomes mystical because the fog season is at its peak. I have produced a special video on fog and the link is below. Fog is just about the number one friend of a landscape photographer, with clouds being a very close number two, as far as I'm concerned. September comes with the first fall colors and when combining this with fog, it cannot be better. I love photographing mushrooms. So I'm like a kid in the candy store because mushrooms are very plentiful around here. You could fill your days with mushroom photography if you have time. Any day in September can be exactly like summer or exactly like fall. This makes September the most variable month. Really good times for nature photographers. You never know what you might run into. October is very special and among my favorites because of the fall foliage. What am I talking about? October is my favorite month for photography. There aren't too many sights prettier than intensely colorful maple or birch trees. October is like walking into Vermont, if you know what I mean. I'm always looking forward to October because of its beauty. Maybe not so much because of the lowering temperatures and always threatening rain, but that's okay too. I get nervous if I cannot get out on some days to catch the fall colors. I both photograph and film, both in the woods and towns. Every day I feel a burning desire to photograph because you never know when a frost or strong wind can come in and the amazing leaves of yesterday are mostly all gone overnight. And you need to start waiting for the next October. Of course, you can continue when the leaves are piled up on the ground. But the leaves are not all of it. The fog season is continuing too and has perhaps gotten even more mysterious. Just the overall feel of nature slowing down and getting ready for colder times is worth stopping for and observing. And mushrooms are still here and impossible to ignore. Many people pick them. I generally just photograph them. October days can sometimes still be a bit like summer. 
there is still a chance to catch insects with a macro lens, but it can get very cold too. Snow is not rare. Then comes November. It is the least loved month over here. Something that wastes your time between the summer and snow, as some would say. It's too cold for many things, but not steadily cold enough for stable snow. This is what many people complain about. For photography, this is not bad. It could really be a very good time for minimalistic photography, such as a single yellow leaf, or for black and white photography. It's a prime time for searching for patterns. Catch the shape more than the color. Focus on shadows or silhouettes. So many opportunities when you think about it. And of course, the first frost and first real snow. Always exciting. It's a unique time of the year in its own right. December is full of action. First preparations for Christmas and then Christmas itself. This time of year is ideal for street photography to catch the colorful decorations and amazing lights. All of a sudden, dark winter is seen as an opportunity to create light and beauty around you. People are optimistic and happy again. We get less and less snow every year. People always hope for a snowy Christmas. When that is combined with beautiful decorations everywhere in the streets, you really have endless photo opportunities. December snow is exciting because it is still new and people appreciate it. I really like to go out on December mornings. I like to be among the first ones who discover what happens around me in nature. I hope I showed you that there's always hope for great photos all year round. I'm sure you have a very similar story regardless of where you live. Every location and every time of year can be really beautiful. As a photographer, you just need to adapt to it. Thank you for spending quality time with me. I appreciate it a lot. If you consider subscribing to my channel and leaving a like, I'll be super happy. Enjoy your photography. Goodbye.